All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the best virtual machine manager for Mac OS. And in case you don't know, virtual machines allow you to simulate other computers on your computer. So you can run Windows, Linux, and even Mac OS on top of your current Mac installation. Now this on paper allows you to run Windows apps and games, and even try out the latest Mac OS betas like Mojave without it affecting your current computer. The disadvantages of doing it is that not all apps and games run at their full speed but the advantage is you can quickly jump in and out of the apps, the Windows apps, without having to restart, install bootcamp, and switch operating systems that way. In this review, we're gonna be walking you through the improvements made in Parallels 14 to let you know if it's a worthwhile upgrade, in case you've already got a copy, or if you're new to this whole virtual machine scene, we're gonna be showing you all the things you can achieve with a virtual machine manager like Parallels 14. All right, the setup, as always, it's pretty simple. You just download the installer from the website, double click, type in your admin password, and you'll be up and running in no time. Seriously, for me, the upgrade took about a minute. A minute, that's nothing. If you have an existing virtual machine up and running, I always recommend installing the latest version of Parallels Tools. That way, all the drivers and everything will be running super smooth. So I like to always make sure my Parallels Tools is updated after a new installation of Parallels. Now, with Parallels 14, their biggest focus was hard drive optimization, graphics improvements, app-specific touch bar support, and support for the latest Mac OS, Mojave. Personally, I didn't experience any improvements in the size of my virtual machine. Now, they stated that I was gonna save around 20 gigabytes, but I guess um, I already run an optimized system, like I delete the files, always compact the space, and I don't have snapshots. So your mileage may vary. Uh, another cool thing is I actually did manage to get Parallels 12 running on the latest Mac OS beta. Now you won't be able to create a virtual machine with Mojave using Parallels 12. You will need to use a newer version, but it's pretty cool that it ran on Mojave. Of course, I don't know what the final build will be like, but hopefully it should still run. While there is a new control center, I personally didn't find any changes to the menu systems comparing it to version 13 other than the new share smart card readers option in USB and Bluetooth. Now this is what you want to hear about, you want to hear about performance. Now launching version 14 was three times faster. It went from eight seconds to two. Boom, that's good. Launching Windows 10, the virtual machine, was also 30% faster. So everything's a bit more snappier here. Now launching a 3D model, in a heavy application like 3D Studio Max was actually two seconds slower. Using 3D Studio Max, it felt the same, but resources wise, when I launched Activity Monitor up, I could see they were using the same amount of performance CPU and memory wise, but according to Activity Manager, version 14 was using 50 energy points and version 13 was using 150. Both Geekbench and Synbench yielded higher scores. Geekbench went from 3,300 to 3,500 on the single core and 6,100 to 6,450 on multi-core. That's a, that's a good, good improvement there. Synbench went from 36 frames per second to 40 frames per second. Another good improvement. But when I ran the Destroyer Worlds Synbench test, which is having Synbench running on macOS at the same time Synbench running inside the Windows virtual machine, I actually found out that Parallels 14 ran it a little bit slower. However, just note that I'm using the launch version of Parallels 14, so I can imagine that there's gonna be perhaps a bit more tuning and performance updates in future. Gaming. Unfortunately, no improvements were made to DirectX support, so you won't be able to run any DirectX 12 games, but that doesn't mean Windows games don't run any faster. That's around 20, 21 frames a second. As you can see here, the frame rates improvements tested earlier in Synbench followed on in Sonic All-Star Racing. That is no water. Something also to bear in mind is that support for Bluetooth controllers still didn't quite work. Hopefully this will be fixed in future but for now, you can always plug in your controllers via USB. Mac OS. Now, one cool feature I wanted to finish up is to show you that you can run Mac OS inside a virtual machine in Parallels. Now, setting up is super simple. You either select an installer you got from the App Store or from the beta website. 
or you can actually use the one found in your hard drive recovery partition. And it's really simple and it's honestly really cool to watch. It was, for me, it was mind blowing. For you, maybe you've seen it before, I don't mind. And once it's set up, there you go, you're in. You've got macOS running within macOS. It's actually really useful. Just say you want to try out a new app and you're not sure how it will affect your system. You can try it out on a virtual machine knowing that if anything goes wrong, it's not going to affect your main system. Also, it's a good excuse to check out easily the new macOS beta. Now check out Mojave. Mojave looks dark. Nice. All right. One thing to note about macOS is that while the OS itself runs pretty smooth, you can see that Geekbench has a pretty good score. I couldn't get access to the GPU. So some apps like Synbench would just hang on launch. All right, that is it. Yes, it's faster, but you won't get any new games supported, unfortunately. <clears throat> but if you want to check out the latest Mojave, if you want to do macOS within macOS, if you want just a little bit more performance, it's worth checking out. There's a free trial, just download it, see if you like it. If you don't, throw it away. Let me see what full screen mode's all about.